Hello and welcome to another Modern Commerce Talks from Aventia. Thanks so much for making the time to join us. Um, I'm your host as ever, Jack Stratton from Insider Trends, and delighted to be joined today by Jenny Vesterland, who is the Director of Business for Omnichannel Logistics at Aventia. Hello, Jenny. Hi. <laughs> um, and really, really um, interesting subject, particularly for me today. And I think um, what we can start, what I hope that we can kind of get into is... Um, Maybe just touching on the pandemic slightly, um, how the customer expectations around logistics are evolving really, really quickly, um, but also maybe just briefly how that's actually affecting, um, you know, how that's affecting maybe some of the challenges retailers have, because I'm well aware that stuff's moving quickly, but the reality of bringing um, some of these logistics innovations to life looks simple on the on the outside and actually probably on the inside it's infinitely more complicated um so really i want to put some of that stuff to you so yeah if we just start off with that um that as a question really you know what what has changed what does the modern consumer kind of expect from logistics at the moment uh, it, they are expecting a lot more from all the companies out there uh both in terms of speed of course you can always discuss speed uh depending on what uh, alternatives you have around the last mile uh today, the transports or the carriers. Um, so I'd say that one thing that you need is uh, you need to have different kind of alternatives. So you have like a few fast ones, maybe to a few to pick up in a locker and store um, different kinds because the customers want different things. And if they have chosen one alternative with one supply, they want to have another one or at the other one. So I think that you you need the flexibility, so uh, and you can also connect it to sustain sustainability. Uh, if you have alternatives that are more sustainable than the other ones, I think that is a good alternative as well. So you have a spread, so the customer is the ones that make the choice, not that you as a company uh, chooses for them. And when just touching on, you know, so with these expectations changing, and obviously retailers are well aware that a big part of this is just choice, really. They need to offer more choice, more options, um, uh, and also to help themselves, therefore, the more options they have, maybe that that as, as a retailer or the business, um, they then have different ways and means of being able to, you know, facilitate a delivery faster. But give us an idea of the reality of that situation. So if, you know, I'm, I'm say I'm quite a well-established retailer, um, and suddenly I realized, right, consumers want extra delivery methods. And I've only maybe got one or two different carriers that I'm working with and I need to add a carrier. Um, how complicated is it? Because as I say, I think it looks fairly simple from the outside and I'm, I'm almost certain that it isn't. So give me an idea of what that looks like. Well, you need a few components. You need an agreement and you need to find what you think or what your customer thinks is the best one for for your customers. Uh, so if, for instance, if it's lockers, uh, you have a different uh, variety that, uh, of carriers who offer that. Uh, choose one of them and start off with that. Not like Don't pick three, choose one that you believe in and get an agreement signed. Um, and you need to, at the warehouse, you need to, you, ha you have um, different setups uh, for dis different carriers. So the warehouse needs, uh, be involved in the process, what does it mean for them, for the staff that works there, uh, for the pickups, uh, different uh, slots of time, so how, how long time do the warehouse has before the orders should be prepared and finished and ready to set uh, to go from the warehouse uh, to the customer. Um, you need to have someone uh, within IT, so you you need to uh, show this supplier on your website as well. Yeah. So you can have different, uh, maybe you need four systems to to synchronize and to work together with this. So it, it, depending on how your IT environment looks and how complicated it is and how manually or how, if you're a big retailer, probably you don't have so much manually work. Uh, mostly it's integrated and it's uh, automatic. Um, but it is a few months probably, and then it, it could vary, of course, uh, depending on focus and how many other projects that you have ongoing. But uh, one month until, I don't know, I don't want to say like a timeline. Yeah. 
<laughs> so it varies a lot between different companies, but it's not just to push a button and show another transporter on the online on site. No, yeah, it sounds like it is uh, a lot more complicated than I imagined. And is um, from your experience, are you know, would you say retailers are struggling to keep up then with customer expectations around logistics? Um, I, I, obviously, there are always leaders, there are always companies who are leading the way with this stuff. But yeah, from your experience, is that something that businesses are struggling with? Yeah, if you have a good setup and. Uh depending on how well prepared you are. But if you have an increase of, for instance, if you have a thousand orders per day today, and then you have an increase by 300% now because of the pandemic, uh, or uh, thankful for the pandemic, but uh, in that order, but uh, it's kind of a big increase. And if you're, are you able to handle that on your warehouse in terms of staff, in terms of stock availability, there are different kinds of parameters um, uh, that control it. So, um, I'd say maybe a lot of companies ha are, it's been, maybe they had it for the plan for like, okay, in five years, we're going to be here and we're going to have this kind of uh, structure or, or how big the warehouse should be or, uh, but maybe that took them two years or they took one and a half year now during the pandemic. I think that we will see a lot of, uh, that we have already seen that, uh, building new warehouses, larger and location, of course, it's going to be uh, big changes now, because now we've seen, it's been so, it happened so fast, um, so I think it will be interesting to follow now, logistics is uh, on the top agenda at, at many companies right now. Yeah, definitely. And that's um, that brings me maybe to kind of a final question. Um, and I think this is this is kind of a question that everyone's sort of asking themselves, businesses, consumers as well with. Um, I mean, I can reference the UK, but I think the same applies everywhere as maybe we get more in control of the pandemic and people are out shopping more, whether stores come out of lockdown or we're just using them more. Um, then, you know, we, we, we get closer I guess, to the the kind of pre-pandemic situation where, of course, e-commerce was enormous and lots of people were enjoying getting stuff delivered to home, but maybe there was a bit more of a balance between that and just going into a store or click and collect, or, you know, there was this kind of multitude of ways that we, that we picked up our stuff or got hold of our items. And Jenny, just as a kind of, um, I guess, kind of a final question, I'm interested in getting your take on you know, what the future holds in relation to this stuff and whether, you know, as stores start to open more or people start to go back to the stores post-pandemic, um, uh, different countries get the pandemic a little bit more under control, people feel a bit safer. Um, you know, does some of the, the, the kind of growth of e-commerce and logistics plateau a little bit? Um, or actually, do you just see this stuff going further and further and further? don't think it's going to be like a plateau. I think it's going to go further and further. Uh, it could be some setback, maybe uh, depending on the weather or so, but uh, I think we're just seeing what we would have seen a few years, like if we could, like forward a few years forward, um, a few years. Uh, I think that we just, it's just getting started. We started off a little a bit earlier because of the pandemic. Uh, so a lot of companies maybe are a bit surprised. Um, they have may have a big increase in amount of orders. So it could be, it could be like a surprise or like uh, I don't know, cold shower. We say in Sweden, uh, but so uh, probably they need to speed up a bit now in order to get the logistics set up. And as we spoke a bit about earlier, with the transport and carriers as well. So maybe a bit speed up, but I don't think um, people will go back to the physical stores, of course, but uh, I think they will be more looking for uh, maybe precise um, expertise or some kind, like when you want to see a physical human being and you want the experience or some events or whatever you have in your physical stores, I think then we will, of course, visit the physical stores. But in terms of, for instance, groceries or if you started to shop them online i don't know why should we not continue with that we've we've changed our behavior now and we've done it for over a year so i think we will see that people will stay there yeah i agree and it sounds like the if logistics providers retailers might sometimes struggle to react to consumer demand quickly enough 
that actually isn't going to prevent this change. All it's doing really is maybe making it slightly slower than consumers want. But yeah. actually, um, you know, <laughs> the demand is is so clearly there. It's so clearly there. And yeah. the evidence of that is massive, isn't it? As everyone keeps reminding us, Amazon have just grown and grown and grown. But then there's there's like another thousand Amazons growing at the same time. Thousand little Amazons everywhere. So, yeah, um, it's... I completely agree. And I and I think, you know, what's what I guess is exciting from your point of view um, is that we're going to probably see a lot of innovation in logistics as well, because yes. um, we're going to have to, right? That, that As that demand increases and the pressure in supply chains increases, there will have to be innovative solutions. So I'm sure, is that sort of fair to say there's going to be, there probably is a lot of innovation to come. And we have a small startup in where I live in my uh, uh, area in Stockholm, we have a startup who's in my neighborhood. They, we, in my neighborhood, we have about sixty thousand citizens, and it's a small startup. So they just, uh, they have just started, but they deliver on on bicycles, and they have like a dark store where you pick, they pick your groceries. Uh, so when you order your bread and butter and milk, uh, you get it delivered within ten minutes. So it's going to be interesting to follow them to see are they are going to expand or how are they going to expand and do their like for their business model and their deliveries. It's going to be interesting to see if they can keep the customer promise to deliver in ten minutes. I tried them and they have succeeded every time. So, yeah, um, it's mad, isn't it? There's so I've seen the same thing in Paris, New York, in London. We have quite a few fifteen-minute providers now, um, which, given how London, like the way London is sort of structured. It's sort of even more mind blowing how they do it. Uh, I don't know, but yeah, they're really good. That you know, and they're all getting lots of funding as well. Their funding rounds are all succeeding. So yeah, it's um, it's an exciting time for logistics, that's for sure. So a lot of startups and pop ups. It's interesting to follow them to see uh, are they going to survive or is it now or it's going to be interesting to follow them. Anyway. Yeah, and it, and you know what? If nothing else, they will ensure that the bigger logistics providers and retailers innovate, right? Yep. So of course, that's um, a, one of the good things. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Jenny, it's been so interesting chatting about this stuff. I um, wish we had time for more. But um, thanks so much for your time and thanks to everyone for listening. And we'll be back with another Modern Commerce talk soon. That's bye from me. Thank you. Thank you, Jack.